Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, where is the Home Secretary? Exactly. She sent the policing minister to come to refuse to repeat her words, because we've seen her words this morning, attempting to rip up the operational independence of the police, attacking their impartiality in the crudest and most partisan of ways, deliberately undermining respect for the police at a sensitive time when they have an important job to do, deliberately seeking to create division around remembrance, which the policing minister rightly said should be a time for communities to come together and to pay our respects. And she is deliberately inflaming community tensions in the most dangerous of ways. She is encouraging extremists on all sides, attacking the police when she should be backing them. It is highly irresponsible and dangerous, and no other Home Secretary would ever have done this. Mr Speaker, remembrance events are really important to all of us. Those events need to be protected. That is the job of the police, to enforce, to respect the law, maintaining public safety, tackling hate crime and extremism, and respecting rights in law to peaceful protest. And they have to follow the law and the evidence, whatever politicians think, not be the operational arm of the Home Secretary, because whether she likes it or not, that is the British tradition of policing, and I, for one and proud of it. Yeah, we know what she's up to. Claiming homelessness is a lifestyle choice, picking fights with the police to get headlines. But the job of the Home Secretary is to keep the public safe, not run an endless Tory leadership campaign. Yeah. Cabinet yeah. colleagues yeah. refusing to agree with her, former police chiefs lining up to condemn her. So two questions. Does this government still believe in the operation independence of the police, and how can it do so while this Home Secretary is in post? And did the Prime Minister and Number 10 agree to the content of this article? Because either the Prime Minister has endorsed this or he's too weak to sack her. And if he can't get rid of her, get a grip of her conduct, it means he's given up on serious government, and he and the Home Secretary should both let someone else do the job. Yeah. Well, I thank the Shadow Home Secretary for her questions, as always. Uh, she asked about where the Home Secretary is. I mean, it may have been wise to ask uh, privately rather than publicly, um, but she is with a close family member who is having a hospital operation this morning, and I have the Home Secretary's permission uh, to say that to the House in the event that somebody raised it, as the Shadow Home Secretary has done, and so I am passing that message on um, to the House. Look, I think the House should just keep in its mind, as we consider this topic, the fact that many of our fellow citizens are feeling uh, deeply uneasy at what is going on in the Middle East, but it's repercussions domestically as well. Uh, we have seen a spike in Islamophobic offences. There have been 21 arrests in the last four weeks for Islamophobic offences. We have seen a surge in anti-Semitic offences. There have been 98 arrests for anti-Semitic offences in the last four weeks. And I've been contacted this morning by members of the Jewish community who are deeply uneasy about what this weekend will bring. And I don't think it's acceptable that our fellow citizens feel scared or uneasy walking about the streets of London. And it is reasonable for politicians, the Prime Minister, the Home Secretary and others, I'm sure some on the other side of the House as well, to raise those concerns and make sure that the police are protecting those communities. It is not acceptable to have fear and hatred on our streets. Let that message go out from this House today. Uh, in relation to the question about operational independence, yes, of course, the government resolutely backs the question of operational independence. As the Prime Minister made clear yesterday, after his meeting with the Commissioner at number 10, but the Prime Minister also said, after his meeting at number 10, that he would hold the Commissioner to account, as politicians are supposed to do, as police and crime commissioners do, as the Mayor of London does as London's PCC and as we do as Members of Parliament. That is perfectly proper and perfectly right. In terms of the approval process with Number 10, I'm afraid I don't have any uh, visibility on that at all. But let's keep, in mind, let's keep in mind that we are seeing a humanitarian crisis unfolding uh, in Gaza. Let's keep in mind there are 200 people being held hostage. Let's bear in mind 1,400 people were slaughtered by terrorists and members of our own community are feeling scared this weekend. Let's keep that at the front of our mind, not party political point scoring. <laughs>